Hello Nuggets. Uh, I thought I'd just do a regular video log today. Um, because I've been watching a YouTube series and uh, it stimulated something in me and uh, I want to put my thoughts down on video so I can watch it back at some point in the future. Uh, there's this guy called Second Chance Hiker. I mean, that's obviously not his name. I think his name's Corey. I think I saw it. But um, his YouTube name is Second Chance Hider, Hiker. He's He was like 400 pounds, a little under 400 pounds. I think he was 390 pounds or something like that when he started what I'm about to tell you about. And he hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. So anyone who doesn't happen to know what that is, it's basically a series of connected trails that start on the border of Mexico and end on the border of Canada. And they go up through the uh, Pacific side of the country, western half of the country. Um, it's not one trail, right? There are different trails and there are ways to connect them. Um, but he started this. It takes many months to complete it. I don't think he completed it, actually. I don't think he wasn't thinking like that. It was more, I'm just going to start walking. But his point was he wanted to make a drastic change in his life. And I think the sun shining on me now is maybe telling me to do the same. Oh, no, it's gone out again. Um, he wanted to make a drastic change in his life. I mean, basically, he said he was eating himself to death, right? And um, I'm not quite as big as he is, but um, uh, I'm about 100 pounds lighter than him. But I recognize what he's talking about, right? Now, he was, I think he's 30 when he started this, and he just did a daily video log of him walking the Pacific Crest Trail. And it was, it's raw and brutal, right? It shows like the first day he did three miles. That's all he could do, because he could barely walk. And then the next day, three and a half miles. But you see him progressively getting better and losing weight and his outlook changing and him becoming very comfortable with expressing his feelings and his thoughts. And he meets people along the journey and people help him out. And he just experiences this whole new thing in life that kind of puts him back on track. Now, I don't know how long it lasted, but I'm watching this and I've thought about doing the Pacific Crest Trail for a few years now. Um, but I've always been afraid of it because I've always thought, well, it's like a marathon, right? So the commitment to running a marathon starts a year before you start the marathon, right? Well, if you're like me, it is. If you're already fit, maybe not. But you've got to train, you've got to be ready, you've got to really put in the effort beforehand. This guy didn't do any of that. I mean, he bought the right gear, and I would imagine he did a little bit of hiking, but the guy was not a hiker. You could tell that. He was just like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And what's interesting is he said that a lot of people told him if he goes and tries this hike, he's going to die. And his response was, well, I am dying. I am currently dying. My current lifestyle is killing me. So I can either make this drastic change. I'm paraphrasing now, but he could either make that drastic change and change his life or he could keep going on that path which he and he knows where that path ends and um it's very moving thinking about it and it's very inspiring and it makes me want to walk do something like that walk the pacific crest trail um not as a stickler for i've got to walk every part of it i've got to i'm going to be what i think they call it a through hiker someone who there is a phrase through hiker and i think it means someone who walks non-stop start to finish, right? The whole however many thousands of miles it is. I don't, I don't need to be that. I'm not thinking like that. But the idea of a series of achievements, you know, um, taking a month to walk 150, 200 miles, whatever. I don't know how many days it would take to walk that. But feeling that sense of achievement, like walking from the Mexico border to Los Angeles, for example. Um, I don't know. I feel a connection to it. The guy's lost a lot of weight. I'm not all the way through his series, but he's lost a lot of weight. And what's interesting, he's lost, lost a lot of weight and he's eating shit. <laughs> it's not like he's on a healthy diet and he's still losing weight. And I kind of look at it and I'm thinking like, wow, you could probably, I mean, this is, it feels like it fits me. The idea of it fits me. Um, the problem is I'm firstly, I'm older. I'm 50. I'm 20 years old than him. Um, the problem is I also have a, a life that I need to take care of. You know, I can't just drop everything and go go out into the wild. Although Laura, you know, my wife is wonderful and she would she would endorse it. She would be like, yep, go, do whatever you need to do to find yourself, you know, to find the right thing in you, the right stuff. So there are 
challenge is the other challenge is that I am a lot more fearful um, in my life. I didn't used to be. There was a time when this would have meant nothing. I'm like, yeah, I'll just start it. I probably wouldn't have prepped and I'd probably had to get, you know, rescued halfway along. But I was fearless and I am not that person anymore. I am fearful. You know, I'm very invested in the rat race and I'm very invested with the, the, the pressures that it brings on you. And um, it's all a little bit conspiracy theory of me, but I kind of believe that you get involved in the normal quote unquote life. And part of what keeps you involved in it is Stockholm syndrome. You just can't see another way. And I feel that I'm very invested in that. And one of the outcomes of Stockholm syndrome is system is that you are fearful syndrome. You are fearful of another, of anything else, of the opposite. And I have that now. I'm very fearful. So it would, that's standing in the way of me doing it. But I'm watching this and I'm thinking, fuck, I need to do this. I need to do something like this. It looks exhilarating. It looks exciting. There's a lot of solitude, which I would love. You know, I love solitude. Um, I like the idea of logging it as well, actually. I'm not sure how... He's, he, he's mentioned his editor, so he had, must have someone who was editing it to um, start with, but I'm not sure whether he already had, you know, 25,000 people watching it and therefore it was worth getting an editor. I have 60 people watching this and not watching this. 60 subscribers, probably five people watching this. Is it really worth going to that extent? And if I didn't have an editor, that would mean I would have to do it on my phone and upload it. Now, I mean, I'm sure you have plenty of time, right? Because at night, what are you going to do? You're going to read, you're sitting in the tent. I mean, you know, you can edit on your phone, which I'm not very good at, but I'd learn how to do that and then upload it. But um, I don't know. It's something I'm thinking about. It's something I'm thinking about. Um, there's an alarm going off in the background, which is conveniently telling me that this video is done. <laughs> So anyway, if you want to look, check him out. He's on YouTube. It's called Second Chance Hiker. Um, he's got a playlist of hiking the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating story, and I feel a lot of affinity for what he's going through. It might be something I want to do. I don't know. Right, Nuggets. Two for thought.